Today we're going to talk cortisol, which is one of our major stress hormones. Now, cortisol can affect your blood sugar, so stay tuned to learn how cortisol affects your blood sugar. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm a functional medicine physician, family physician, registered dietitian, and nutritionist. And this is my channel. We talk about gut health, hormone health, and gene health. So if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing that today. And hit the bell notification to be notified when we post new videos every Thursday. So let's talk about stress. In my functional medicine practice, I've helped hundreds of people analyze their stress, look at their cortisol curves. We'll talk about what that is soon. Um, and then focus on how to improve that. And what people don't realize a lot of the times is that um, that cortisol is affecting your blood sugar. So if you have diabetes, if your blood sugar is starting to inch its way up every year during your physical, uh, then you need to think maybe about stress and maybe about cortisol. Now, where is our stress coming from? There can be multiple reasons. Some of the top reasons for stress, and I'll put a link here, are moving, having a child, um, going through a divorce, that would be a major stressor, trauma, illnesses. There can be physical stressors like being in the hospital um, for you know even just a fracture or a chronic disease or having a loved one in the hospital, caring for an elderly parent or grandparent, um, having a child that's sick, that's one that I know a lot about and I'll talk about that later. So today we're going to dive into that and how blood sugar is affected by cortisol, which is your stress hormone. So all those stressors I just talked about can raise your cortisol. And then cortisol can then raise your blood sugar. Now how does cortisol affect our blood sugar? Well, cortisol can um, decrease insulin secretion, first of all, and insulin is what helps our blood sugar get into our cells and out of our blood. So if cortisol, if the body thinks that it's in fight or flight mode, which it does when cortisol is high, then that can cause the insulin to be reduced and then the blood sugar stays in the blood. Thought the thought, Thoughtfully by the body, the body was preparing for the fight or flight situation, so it needs that extra blood sugar. What we don't understand is we're not being chased by a tiger right now, we're just going through a stress in our life, and then that body thinks that it needs that extra blood sugar, and then when that blood sugar sticks around, that can lead to situations like elevated blood sugar when you're fasting, elevated blood sugar after meals, and then eventually possibly lead to diabetes. So we want to get out of fight or flight, and we want to get more into the rest and digest. And one key way to do that is to look at your cortisol patterns and to work to lower your cortisol patterns. Now looking at your cortisol patterns is something I've talked about a little bit before in some of my other hormone videos, but basically the best way to do it is to look with a saliva or a urine test. And we use um, some different companies for our saliva tests. We've used um, diagnostic uh, solutions. We have used the Dutch test, but that's more for the urine test we, we use for the urine cortisol. We've used Genova um, as one. Well. So there's lots of functional medicine labs that do have saliva cortisol. Now Quest and LabCorp, two of the major in, you know, the ones that people use for their insurance or through their insurance, um, they do have saliva cortisol tests, but um, we can't guarantee the insurance will cover them. Often insurance, if they cover anything for uh, cortisol, it'll be the blood test, which is not nearly as helpful. So you could try, you know, it just all depends on your plan. Everybody's different, or you can pay out of pocket. Most of the functional medicine tests run anywhere from hundred bucks to the Dutch test being um, more than that into the 250 if you're getting the regular wholesale price, which is what my practice offers. Um, so there's a variety of, of ranges. With the Dutch test, you get a lot more information, not just cortisol. So it really, if you have the money for that, and I understand that some people don't, but if you have the money for that, it is worth it to find out kind of all your hormone pathways and how they're working together. But anyway, so you don't have to do the testing. If you know that you've been through a divorce, a trauma, a major illness, um, stress with your children, stress with your job, that's the main stress I see for most of my patients. And like I said, I've worked with hundreds of patients. And people are working, you know, 12 or 14 hour days. They just aren't able to make time to get into that rest and digest. And they're facing deadlines and they're, you know, 
volunteering or doing things, you know, help being a good parent, being a good partner, all on top of working 60 hour weeks. Um, and I do see that a lot. And that is going to burn you out. That is going to make your body be in fight or flight and think that you're go, 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 running from a tiger all the time. And therefore, that blood sugar is going to kick in and it is going to get higher. Cortisol sometimes can be affected later after the trauma or the stress gets a lot better. So I do see that a lot when I talk to people about their stressors and they say, well, that was two years ago, that was five years ago, that was 10 years ago. Well, cortisol can be like a bucket, so it can just keep filling and keep filling and keep filling. And it sometimes doesn't learn how to regulate itself because there's been a constant stressor for, let's say, a couple months. And then it builds up and your body tends to stay in that high stress mode. And even though you maybe don't have that job that's stressful anymore, maybe you're not ill anymore, maybe your child's not ill anymore, then your body still doesn't understand that. Um, the mind might, but the body might not. So there still could be that kind of stress or state. And then if we see our blood sugar come up a few years later, that could be because that cortisol is still not addressed or not balanced. So definitely think about that if there was a major stressful time period in the past. And I'll give you my own personal example. So in 2017, I was changing my business over. Um, I was taking my every 10 year family practice boards. We just recertify every 10 years. So you do have to, you know, buff up and study and all that. So changing my practice over in January, took the boards in April, found out my husband had cancer in May. Six weeks after that, found out my six-year-old had cancer, leukemia. So 2017 was adrenaline, cortisol, trauma, tears, so much stress. And I made it through and I did okay with it. And I didn't have a lot of health problems. But then now in 2019, I'm starting to see some of the effects some of the cortisol kind of feeling anxious quite often, or some of the belly fat coming on, um, not being able to re relax very well, uh, and also some gut problems too. And we talk a lot about gut health on here, and so there's definitely gonna be some videos on gut health and stress. So just a personal example of how two years later, even though that was the most stressful time then, I'm now feeling the effects. So think about that if you did have some traumas or some stressors in the past. And we all do, and maybe we're all not cortisol hyperdrive right now, or maybe it never affected us. But just if you're having some blood sugar problems, think about that. And unfortunately, what I see from a lot of um, patients that have been to other providers that are, the provider might be busy and there's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one focus sometimes. and they will tell them their blood sugar is okay when it gets into the 100, the 101, the 103. They'll not necessarily say it's okay, but they'll say, oh, we'll check it next year. Well, let's not wait for diabetes to happen. Let's not wait for a true blood sugar or insulin problem to happen. So what I recommend is if that blood sugar is creeping up into the, the fasting blood sugar I'm talking about, fasting blood glucose, it's usually part of any kind of um, lab that they do at a physical. So if that's creeping up into the mid or upper 90s, address it now. Work on your cortisol, work on your diet, and address it now before it gets to be that problem. And also ask your provider to check a fasting insulin level. So they can do that when you're fasting for your cholesterol test and for your um, blood sugar test. They can just check a fasting insulin level and see if you're trending in that direction. If that insulin is trending higher and higher fasting, that means your blood sugar is soon to follow. So, like we said, if the cortisol is running high, the insulin can, the secretion can be lower, but over time, you can see insulin trying to catch up and then the insulin secretion getting higher and higher, and you can then run into blood sugar problems. So, consider that when you're getting your next blood work done with your provider or work with a functional medicine provider. So, that's kind of the connection between cortisol and blood sugar and insulin. So we want to work on that cortisol and therefore help lower the blood sugar. Well, how can we do that? Well, first and foremost, let's look at lifestyle. So that's the main thing I try to get folks to um, focus on because the supplementation part of it, it's this much. The lifestyle changes are about this much. So let's try to work on that first. So stress management, 
yes, that's a term that gets glossed over a lot or maybe briefly mentioned when it's such a huge topic and it's so difficult for people, but it is a, needs to be the cornerstone of good cortisol support or cortisol management and good blood sugar management. So looking at things like deep breathing, um, we've talked on this channel about the four, seven, eight breathing. So breathing in for four, into the belly, holding for seven, and exhaling for eight. So you basically just want that exhale to be longer than that inhale. So that's one good way to reduce cortisol, and I want you to do three of those in a row several times throughout the day. That's an idea. Also looking into meditation. Now, some people can sit quietly, calm their mind, you know, you learn, learn meditation, um, on their own and then practice it on their own and some people need guidance. So if you need guidance, what I'd recommend are some of the apps and that would be what we use is Bootify or we use the Calm app or Headspace or Insight Timer is one recently that one of my patients mentioned and is really enjoying. So those are some good ideas um, for meditation apps. Um, you can also do just really good self-care techniques um, like baths you might like epsom salt baths with some essential oils i use those a lot um, massage um, acupressure acupuncture those are all good ways to kind of reset that cortisol system um, turning off the tv turning off the you might use the cell phone for your meditation app but you know getting the blue lights on there kind of letting go of social media, of the outside chatter that comes in all the time. So trying to kind of get out of that fight or flight mode by disconnecting for a little bit, especially at night before you go to bed and especially if you have trouble sleeping. So that's another way because if you have trouble sleeping that really throws off your blood sugar and it throws off your cortisol. So working on that and also, you know, saying no. If you have the option to say no to certain obligations and to just take more quiet time to yourself, maybe take a walk, get out in nature, do some deep breathing or meditation out in nature, just bringing that relaxation principle and making it first and foremost in your life. So getting good sleep, relaxing, deep breathing, meditating, all of those are going to be ways to bring your blood sugar and your cortisol down. Now let's also talk about diet. So we want to, of course, reduce sugar, right? So sugar has many forms. It could be high fructose corn syrup, which is the worst, sodas and candies and things like that. Yes, given. That's the worst. But then also in the form of um, cane sugar, which is better, but still not good. Honey. Now, I know honey has some great beneficial properties, but it can raise your blood sugar and it can raise your cortisol. And agave nectar is another one that's used in a lot of the healthier, healthier type foods. Um, but that's one to look at, too, if you're looking at blood sugar. So read your labels. We're at least lucky enough in our society to have food labels where we can look at sugar. I remember a day when we didn't have food labels. So look at sugar content and we want to keep that five grams or less. And of course that would add up if you were eating five grams um, every hour, then that's gonna add up. But like try to make most of your foods five grams or less. And definitely making sure it has a good healthy fat content and healthy protein content in there. And try to have to not have processed carbohydrates. So um, the grains that are processed, like processed corn, processed wheat. Any of those, so when you see pastas and crackers and cookies and breads, it's not like you can never have them, but those are processed grains. And those can, you know, a piece of bread can raise your, your blood sugar as much as some candy could. Weird to think of, but yes, it can. It's just a staple in our society, but it really can raise your cortisol and your blood sugar. So trying to get those processed grains out and getting in more healthy fats you know, coconut, uh, avocado, uh, especially olive oil, that has a lot of great research behind it. And any of those um, not processed fats and getting the healthy fats in. And then also some clean, healthy proteins and lots and lots of vegetables and some fruits. Now, fruits, of course, will have more than five grams of sugar, but it's not added sugar and it's real sugar and they have fiber in them. And then fiber is helpful. So, yes, a couple of fruits servings a day is fine or are fine and then you know but lots a plate with lots of protein and lots of vegetables so those are our cornerstones diet and lifestyle reducing stress reducing 
the sugar and the processed grains, and also stimulants like coffee, unfortunately, um, and uh, high caffeine products. Definitely those energy drinks and all of that, get those out of there. But um, coffee can raise your cortisol. So if you're having trouble with cortisol and blood sugar, think about that. But definitely if you don't want to give up your coffee, get your, your cortisol curves checked out with a functional medicine provider just to see if that's the problem. Um, also alcohol, all the fun stuff that people, not everybody thinks they're fun, of course, but all the things that people tend to overdo um, can raise cortisol and therefore later on can raise blood sugar. So thinking about toning that down if you feel like you're um, drinking too much alcohol, you know, it, cutting that in half, stopping altogether, not leaning on it as a crutch, those are all great ways to lower cortisol. So getting those lifestyle pieces in place and getting good sleep too. And then you can think about some supplements, um, some su supportive supplements we've mentioned before for hormones in general and also for cortisol is ashwagandha and rhodiola. We've talked about those before. And if you're trying to lower cortisol, if you have a spike of cortisol and a spike of blood sugar overnight, then you can take at night some phosphatidylserine and I'll put some links to ideas for these for good quality um, brands. And I'm not connected with any brand, by the way. Also, uh, we use things like magnolia. Um, that's a really great herb for lowering cortisol. And just making sure you watch that and you monitor that and you make sure that none of those are in worsening the problem because even though they're adaptogenic herbs that are supposed to help lower cortisol or even bring it up when it's needed. So adaptogenic herbs are kind of complex and they can kind of tone it or raise it when needed. Um, you want to make sure that they're not affecting you in a diverse way. So if you felt more anxious or um, too much energy after taking any of these, then you want to think of a different herb. And it's best to work with a provider, a herbalist, a naturopath, a functional medicine doctor. So those are some ways to lower cortisol and therefore lower blood sugar. But definitely if you're having blood sugar issues, think about looking at your cortisol. And I'll put some links to the tests that I talked about and some links to my other videos. So if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are interested in this information about gut health and hormone health and gene health, I do post videos every Thursday. So subscribe, please, if you're interested. And hit the bell notification to learn when we... Um, or to get notified when we post our videos every Thursday. And please let me know in the comments below if you liked this video, if you have any questions, if you're having issues with any cortisol or blood sugar or hormone issues, or if you have any ideas for future content. So thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next Thursday.